All right. So I, I just want to um, begin our, our little con. I hope this is a conversation today by uh, thanking you, those of you who are here for for your time and the effort that you're putting into develop your developing your own Jyotish practice. So I'm I'm thinking that uh, that most of you that are here online are um, have are either have either completed your your formal Jyotish education or studies. Well, wait a minute. You can never complete those, can you? But at least that you're well on your way to uh, to using this using this beautiful celestial science in order to uh, to help other people in a in a professional way as consultants. So the first thing that I wanted to offer today is now again this is just my uh, this is this is my perspective. Of course, any any Jyotish comes through the comes through the filter of the Jyotishi. And I think that most of the people that, I mean, many people that know my story is that I've been a, a professional consulting uh, astrologer for, well, um, 49 years. Yes, I'm not making that up. Uh, and so, uh, of course, um, with that level of experience, I mean, I'm not talking about myself. I'm just saying, again, as me, as a vehicle for Jyotish that... I've discovered that I, I think that um, we have an important duty as Jyotishis these days to uh, to offer to offer hope and reassurance and comfort to people. Now that might seem like a, a pretty uh, simple idea, but um, I think it's I think it's worth I, I think it's worth uh, em emphasizing. You know, there's plenty of scary news out there uh, every anywhere in the anywhere on the globe these days, obviously. Um, so people that will be coming to you, I, I think for, um, I mean, if they're coming to you with the worst case scenario on their mind, I think that I just remind you that there's always something to look forward to. Yes, there are plenty of well-known professional Jyotishis out there that can just scare the pants off anybody, um, but and and sure, there's there's a lot to be concerned about, not afraid of, but concerned about. But I, I think that um, one idea that I've that I really rely on is to not pathologize negative planetary combinations in a in any in any client's chart. Yes, you can get into that maybe in the oh I don't know somewhere in the middle of your session you would uh, gently point out some behaviors that they might want to improve or uh, or ways of thinking that they might want to improve. It all goes back to thinking, doesn't it? But um, there's, there's, all, there's always something to look forward to. And even if you have to look as far down the road as you have to in order to at least end your session on uh, uh, with a client, there's always something. I mean, I, I make it a point to do that. I'm just saying that's as a technique. And it leaves, um, I mean, I, it is to be hoped that it leaves your, your clients, my clients, your clients, with a, a sense of something to strive for, um, strive for, period. So, you know, as metaphysicians, we're not only, we're not only Jyotishis, but we're metaphysicians. It's our job to, um, to, you know, perhaps direct people's attention to what, first of all, what they can manage in their own life which is much more than some people think they can manage, uh, but also to uh, develop the consciousness of looking at, at you know, what could be evolutionary or what could be positive or how, how they could move their, their selves or their families forward uh, in, in any particular planetary combination, whether that's uh, Mahadashas or Bhuktis or Antardashas or you know, any, any uh, subset of, of Dasha sequences, or just plain old garden variety transits. I think that uh, b because of further information I've put out there previously, you know, I'll be honest with you, transits are my main tool. And so if, uh, I, of course, there's a lot of, there are a lot of complex planetary uh, m measuring devices out there to use. So many, there's so much to know, isn't there? Um, but really, when you get right down to it, as I've mentioned previously, uh, in terms of applying the, what we're talking about today to your practice as a Jyotishi, 
I have to remind you to, um, or just I have to at least offer to keep in mind that people have only a certain attention span. Uh, I'm sorry, that was an awkward sentence, but people, even when people are hearing all sorts of really fascinating, interesting, personal information about themselves, still there's a limit. I, uh, I mean, as a, as a practitioner, there's a limit for me. It's either 60 minutes or 90 minutes, but there's also that, that limit of what a person can actually absorb and process in any given, at any given length of time. So that is why I keep it as simple as I possibly can. I keep it as simple as I can because I'm simple minded as well. But I, I think that in terms of um, the benefit to clients is to keep it simple which seems like an ironic statement because you could sit and measure any given any given chart any given prashna you could you could spend days or weeks calculating mahertz you could look at the you know down to the sukshma level sukshma level of, of of dashas and then not be able to draw a conclusion but again the simplicity helps you to draw a conclusion in about any given situation for 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 a client so Again, the short version of that conversation was, please remember to not pathologize. There's always tremendous ability to evolve in a client's chart. That's what you're there for, to point that out to them and, uh, and to keep it as simple as you can. Um, and I reassure you that simplicity, I mean, for, first of all, it's a much appreciated by, by your clients or it will be. And, uh, and, Secondly, the, 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 the beauty of Jyotish is that it is so useful, it is so profound, it is so brilliant that even one crumb of Jyotish, if that could be a measurement, a crumb of Jyotish is, uh, is, is, can be so valuable to a person, a, a, a person with questions. So don't feel that you have to offer every single, uh, every single detail, even if, you, even if you knew what those were. So um here's another new topic too i just want to offer this before before we um, look at some questions from you is that one one very simple way uh to find out how a person is going to react to any given influence whether it's transits or dashas is to look at where the if, if the lord of the first is in one five or nine or the Lord of the Fifth is any any is any Tricona or triangular house, or the line of the the Lord of the Ninth is in is in one five or nine. That's a very simple equation, isn't it? The the the, the Lord of the First, Fifth, or Ninth in any in any trine house. This uh, this elevates the uh, the chart the the birth chart, or therefore the experience of of your client, a, a tremendous amount. Um, so hang on and apparently i have a so apparently i have a slow network connection why that does not surprise me i'm not sure uh bill, ramdas bell are we still good yes we are okay i'll just you're a little fuzzy on the video but the audio and the information is coming through loud and clear okay well, I, I frequently say it's probably better to see me at this stage in low resolution. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, so I, I did want to I just wanted to leave that very simple measurement of the um, the the trine lords in trine houses as uh, as you know elevating something. But along those lines too, if you did if if you saw your uh, the, the opposite would also be true. Uh, of, a, of a client with a client that has the first the first lord in the eighth house or something along those lines uh, i mean that's just a very simple example i i wouldn't i don't mention that until we get further into the conversation and i only mention that that to a client in order to find out what their experience of that is and uh to also reassure clients uh that that usually if they have a, a, a really difficult, difficult, or as I say, complex situation in their birth chart, that typically there will be, if there is going to be uh, some kind of a disaster associated with that, it will be a one-off. If, uh, I'm, if I'm 
if I'm working with a client and uh, the, who, just to use my previous example, has the first house lord in the eighth house, you know, I would say that that was, you know, that's a pretty intense and complex uh, position. And, uh, and, it, it, and then I would give them a list of what I think that that could have rec represent. And then typically they say, well, yes, I was in, you know, five really hairy car wrecks or, you know, something uh, or uh, almost died at birth or, you know, all those kinds of things. But I think that, uh, you know, part of my job description is to encourage people to say, don't slack off, don't lose your due diligence, but that's not likely to happen again. So again, it goes, my message today is to, uh, to uplift your clients as much as you can. Uh, no matter what their situation is, there's something positive for them to work with in their chart. And as my, as my friend, uh, our, 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 our beloved late previous president of the American College of Vedic Astrology, uh, Bill Levesey would all, often say, don't cheerlead them off a cliff, which is, which is, I, you know, I don't often tell my clients, do you don't bet the farm on the turn of a card? Don't cheerlead them off a cliff? Of course not. But but still, these days, um, you know, keeping in mind that that words from a from a Jyotishi has a really profound effect on on the on the listener, or the hearer, or the client uh, to 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 up you know upgrade your language as much as you can. So that's my that that's my opening comment about keeping things as cheerful as possible, especially in these in these very unusual, uncertain times. Um, so you know, I'm here. I'm carving time out of my sa Saturday morning to be at your service. Uh, I'm here to ad address, as I say, not answer, but address any question, concern, or uh, that you that you have. Uh, so, uh, Ram Das, Bill, should we open this to questions, or, um, or, or what's what's the best use of our time here? Yes. So, if everyone looks on their panel, they should be able to send in questions. And um, right now, we don't have anything in. So, go ahead and start typing in your questions. What is it that you've been wondering and what to know? See what secrets we can get Charlotte to reveal today. Yes, I have no secrets. I have a Jupiter Mercury conjunction. What I know, I, I intend to pass that on to you. Anything that's useful. Um, but well, we're, um, and also in terms of questions, as a matter of fact, I, I, I certainly don't mind you asking me a question about your own birth chart. Um, I mean, that's because that would also serve in a certain way to, um, well, just to let you see as a, as a practical working example of, of how I do my work or how I talk to my, my clients. Um, that's fine with me. Um, uh, uh, so, but in, in the meantime, until, until we have some questions here, um, I, I did want to uh, comment on where the, where the planets are in the sky right now. Isn't this quite wonderful uh, in a certain ironic way? Isn't this wonderful to have so many planets in their dignities? Now, I just use the term like dignity, meaning that, yes, they're in, their, they're in various different dignified positions, uh, whether they're, well, anyway, I'm just using that term. I'm sure there are more precise terms, but that, that we don't need those kind of those more precise terms. The, the idea here that I'm desperately trying to, uh, to share with you is that, um, I, I believe that this time that we're in right now in mid-September of, of 2020 uh, is there is plenty of room for, uh, for us thinking the very best and highest thoughts we possibly can. Now, if that sounds like a quaint idea, yes, it does sound like a quaint idea. It sounds like a quaint idea even to me. But in, in terms of what thinking our best thoughts, well, as we all, we, we know thoughts are things. The quality of our mind and our consciousness has a has a, a direct and immediate uh, uh, imprint on our on our on our environment, and I think that under these conditions right now, um, let's see, is Mercury still in Virgo? I should know this. <laughs> I look at a client's chart to see if uh, yes, Mercury is still in Virgo. 
uh, you know, this gives, I think that, you know, the, the, the reason that Mercury is exalted in Virgo is that, uh, you, you know, there, there can be a real pure type of thinking. I mean, that's one very simple uh, way to, you know, way, way to describe the, uh, the, the, the offerings of Mercury in Virgo. Now, of course, Mercury is in Virgo uh, for three weeks and three or six weeks at a time any given year. So it's, it's a, you know, it is a short term influence. But again, the reason that we're studying astrology is to figure out how to collaborate with the, with, with the, the planets against the background of the stars, isn't it? So we can be considerate with the, with the stars in this case with the planets as well. So um, I, th I, this is the type of information that I've been offering to my clients too, is it, 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 irrespective of anything in their birth chart, even if they've got all sorts of difficult uh, dasha a difficult dasha sequence or difficult transits, that look, Mars is in its own sign. Sharpen up your tools and weapons. Uh, you know, pay attention to, to your, to refining your skill set, uh, act boldly in some way. Uh, of course, I don't have to say don't be belligerent or obnoxious or, or you know, run roughshod over people. But again, Mars is in its own sign of Aries, and this does this do, even. Yes, I know it's retrograde. You see how we're talking with a client. I would just, I would minimize that. You know, the problems with or issues associated with retrograde planets, as you may know, uh, typically manifest themselves at the point where the planet is stationary retrograde or even stationary direct. The problem with a retrograde situation, if there's a problem, is the fact that the planet is not moving at all. Once the planet regains its uh, uh, you know, speed going forward or backward, it's pretty manageable. So that's the state with Mars right now, just to use Mars um, uh, as an example. Sharpen up your tools and weapons. What you know, define what your desire is. Where your where your desire is, your consciousness goes, and where your consciousness goes, your your activities are developed, and and what you spend your time on, in terms of your activities, leads to your defines your destiny. I might not say that whole thing to uh, a client unless they had, uh, I, I don't know, unless they had a lot of planets in the ninth house, but I, I'm I'm just offering that. I'm just offering that to our listeners as well. Uh, and again, back to Mercury, Mercury is exalted. So this says in distinct contrast to, to Mars that, um, that pay attention to the details, you know, smarten up, clean things up, get things organized, get your filing done, make sure that the small wheels are turning so that the big wheels turn. As I said earlier, purify your thoughts, uh, purify your thoughts. That's, Again, what I would say to a client, and I'm now using this opportunity to offer this as a general general principle. And um, and of course, we know that Jupiter has just resumed direct motion, yay, in mid-September. Uh, so again, in terms of uh, in terms of the acquisition of wisdom through direct to, through direct experience, or the acquisition of wisdom through uh, through cultivating the so source material. Uh, is is in is in full force and effect between again between mid September and maybe the week before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving. What I'm that I'm using I'm I'm this is turning into a, a soliloquy here because I don't see a question yet, but um, I'm also. Charlotte, Charlotte, we do have we have gotten in a couple good questions, so okay, you want to well, them, and then we can always fill in here. Yes, you know I will do that and. Thank you, Ram Das. Thank you, because I can't, for whatever reason, I can't see that on my screen. Um, yeah. So maybe. Claudia Ritchie asks a really good question. What okay. are your thoughts on professional insurance malpractice claims and some such? <clears throat> well, my thoughts are virtually nil on that. Um, but I suppose if, okay, so again, I'm only referencing this because my experience has been in the last 49 years. Uh, I have never had to uh, employ that sort of backup plan. But again, this is a modern world. 
for for those people that do do not have the affliction of having four planets in Pisces, uh, that I would say that you know if that makes you feel better to get E and O insurance. I don't know. Is that what we is that what they still call it errors and omissions or something along those lines? I don't know how much that 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 would set you back, but but sure, get that if you're if you're a strong Saturn based person, please do. Um, Ram Das, you know, you have a, a very pragmatic attitude about the, the professional practice of Jyotish. Is that something that you would that you would get? I'd never even considered that before. So thank you for the question. Um, well, I have it as a therapist, of course, I have malpractice insurance because you have a license um, to, to practice. And so what's at risk is your license. Um, I, I mean, if you want, I have heard some practitioners of Reiki and palmistry and things like that that develop a waiver so that the client signs a statement just basically saying that I'm pursuing this of my own information, that we're not giving any medical advice or things like that, and that it's for like, it used to be called entertainment purposes only. I think that's a very good question. So um, I'm not really sure, and it would depend on your state. Um, but that's my thoughts. But I agree, at least, I mean, if you're having this thought already, I would um, do this. I would also be very careful when I give advice. I'm very cautious to make sure that like, this is my, this is what I'm really thinking. But, you know, I don't know how a court would handle that. I think a lot of our courts would probably just not even take it. Or uh, no, I, I would be surprised if an attorney ever would take this case because it's unlikely to win. But those are, I mean, it's a very good question and perhaps we, yes. people should think about this in their own practice and let us know if you have different experiences. Yeah, that it, it is a good question. I, 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 you know, I'm always going on about, uh, about how we as Jyotishi should, should think about ourselves as, uh, as being on the same level as a physician or an attorney or a financial advisor. Um, in a certain way, is that we are not gypsy fortune tellers. And also we are, I mean, my personal thing is that we are not here for educate, for, for uh, entertainment purposes only. I remember back in the seventies, there was a lot, 1970s that is, there was a lot of discussion among, you know, the few professional astrologers at that point about this, about and astrology is entertainment, but um, it's not entertainment. I find myself frequently in the middle of a conversation, especially with a medical professional. For some reason, I have a lot of uh, MDs as clients and I, I tickle myself by saying, ironically, I am not giving you uh, medical uh, medical advice, but look, Saturn's crossing over your Jupiter. You might want to check your liver enzymes or something along those lines. And uh, but it's never been a, it's never been a question for me. And I think that I've already mentioned too, that when I, I live in uh, I live in the Wild West. I live in the middle of Phoenix, Arizona. This is still the Wild West here. When I first began practicing uh, astrology, it was Western astrology, you know, 49 years ago. But it was actually illegal to do what I was doing. So um, there, and in the meantime, there hasn't been much up. I don't, I don't, as far as I know, I don't think it's illegal. What what I'm doing, uh, what I'm doing here, in, you know, practicing astrology in Phoenix. But uh, for that reason, I think that if there was were any kind of legal dispute, that it probably wouldn't be taken seriously. Um, I, I hope that at least addressed your question. May, I, may, it would be fun for you to 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 see if if you're really concerned about that as a uh, as a as a um, you know something to uh, put in place for your your professional practice that. Uh, I'd be interested in in some feedback from you on what that is. That could just become general knowledge. So Charlotte, Vish Chatterjee from Los Angeles wrote in and he said that he has ENO insurance and also has an agreement with clients that they are responsible for all decisions they make and cannot hold him liable for their decisions. So he's quite knowledgeable in this area. So there's some contribution. Thank you so much, Vish, for sharing that information. Yes, that's useful. Um, that's useful. That's a good question. You never yeah, know. So we have some other questions that we can move on to. Okay. Um, 
What are you? Oh, no, where's that? No worries. So someone asked about. Um, let me see. For some reason, I'm only getting the same question over and over here. But someone asked about how do you handle it when people are asking for readings for people that are not their children or family members, like. Uh, I think it's, um, oh, so here it is. Now I finally found the question. No, I have another one. <laughs> so I, I apologize. Someone wrote in a great question that was about how do you handle when someone's wanting a reading, let's say for a boyfriend or something like that, and the boyfriend's not present. Well, that's a common, uh, that's a common occurrence. So. Typically, you know, I think that probably my my clientele is, I mean, maybe I'm in a maybe I'm in a, I'm in a really specialized position because um, almost all of my clients are referred by someone else. By, I do referrals and repeat only. So um, in, in a certain way, I know that I I know where my clients come from and I know who their predecessors were. By that I mean I know who referred them and and I you know I have some sense of of their mm, let me see what integrity, reliability, honesty. So to answer your question or to address your question, uh, typically if someone is going to, uh, if someone wants my attention uh, to ask about their, their boyfriend slash partner, whomever, um, they will have let me know in that in advance. I can do this sort of thing off the cuff. However, uh, if to, to most of the time I would uh, require birth data with an exact time of birth. Now, uh, I, I do, my, my, my clients know that they will have, they, they tell me they have permission from their, their boyfriend or whomever, uh, uh, or boss or colleagues for this information. If somebody's giving me somebody's birth time, uh, that implies to me that they had a conversation with somebody about getting this. So, so that's one thing. I don't mean to sound, you know, sloppy or careless about this, but in, in order to serve my client, I, I I will do that. It's simple enough to, I mean, again, another aspect of my practice is, is that it, you know it's simple enough for me to type some some uh, birth data in my laptop and in a matter of what thirty seconds, ninety seconds, be able to get at least a, a, a at least um, you know get the big picture view of this uh, of this person, depending on what the question is. If it's a compat, is if, if it's a comp question about compatibility, yes, we know in advance that we have to get, uh, well, written permission comes in the form of an email. I have, here's what's his name's birth data. He gave it to me. He says, yes, you can talk about it. Um, so that's another thing. But how I also, uh, if for whatever reason I have any misgivings about this, this, uh, this, type, of in, uh, this type of inquiry, I will say that, yeah, okay, as a reflection in your own chart, client, as a reflection in your own chart, client, uh, the fifth house lord or the seventh house lord, uh, th this this indicates to me that this person who happens to be born on this day, whoever this person is, just a random person, you could have, he could be in, a, he or she could be in, um, you, you know, this is improving or or I would say, you know, watch yourself. Do you know who you're dealing with here? I'm not sure about that. Uh, or, you know, it depends on what the question is. If it is a, if it is a full on uh, synastry session comparing, comparing just so they'll know who they're dealing with, then, then yes, I, of course I require it written in terms of, of an email. Um, I, don't, I don't require a notary signature on anything and thank God, so far, 49 years later, there's I've, I haven't had any repercussions from that. So is that helpful or is that helpful or is that too much information? I, I think that's a really good approach. Yeah. So and we have another question from this here. And he says, as Joe Tissues, we are always judging and weighing what we see in the chart. It is inevitable that we also judge the person that we see before us, the way they speak, their body language, their attitudes. 
Is it okay to judge the whole person on a holistic evaluation or should we stick to just judging what we see in the chart? What would you advise in terms of precautions of judgment? Well, I love the question. It's very thoughtful. Thank you, Vish. Um, I just use I just use the chart. I mean, I personally just use the chart. That's what I would say. Um, and which also we could also reverse that situation. You know, um, the 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 chart. You know, we're just using that term chart for Rossi or whatever it is we're looking at. The chart will give you more accurate information than what you are observing anyway. Um, does that make sense? No, you, you you can get every bit of information that you need out of out of the chart. Now, it may be that, uh, or in fact, this is standard procedure for me. When I'm meeting a client these days, everything takes place on Skype or Zoom, obviously. Uh, but once I get, I mean, within just a couple of minutes of, uh, of our dialogue, Dialogue is usually a soliloquy. I warn my clients that I will do most of the talking and that is what they're paying me for. But during our, our so-called conversation or our, our session, um, I, 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 can, I will be able to understand based on the words that they speak, what kind of words I should be using for them. So in terms of a judgment, um, again, the, the, that was the long answer to, yes, just use the chart. I, can I, I'll, I'll just back up for a minute and tell a story which, might sound really odd, um, but back in the day when I was still uh, still consulting with people across my desk, a, a lady came to me, um, and gosh, she was just really miserably dressed, and she was wearing a hoodie, and she had her head down all the time, you know, a hoodie, a sweatshirt, and she was, you know, just really, really ramshackle to me, and, and to be honest, I'm, I was surprised to see her there, because Quite frankly, in the most loving way, it's not cheap to talk to a Jyotishi. You know, you have to have some, you know, you have to have a certain amount of money that you need to invest in a session with a Jyotishi. So anyway, she showed up. She looked really raggedy, and she just would not. She was she was just sandbagging me the entire time. And if I would have judged her on her appearance, I would have been completely misled. So she had me so flummoxed. I just kept staring at her, at her chart. And I, then I noticed all these fabulous planets in the fourth house. And I said, this is, I said, I can see that you have several advanced academic degrees. Then she put her head up. She put her, she pulled her hood back as you know, it was a very dramatic reveal. And she said, yes, I'm a, what, what was she? A psychotherapist, a medical doctor. I just wanted to see what you could see. And then we actually had a conversation. So it works both. I mean, I, again, I, uh, my that that little a analytical technique was just looking at how many planets she had in her fourth house of educational degrees. That's a good. I mean, so it works backwards as well. I would say to, to carve back around to your original question, Vish. You're very patient with me. To uh, simply simply look at the chart. Um, of course, that begs the question of how old the person is. Uh, I mean, the age of a person really is what I mean. Have they had chance to evolve past their past their default settings or past any sort of knee-jerk reaction to their own planets? That's also a question. But of course, education, I mean, with all due respect, education has a, a huge bearing on on uh, on judging the the chart, depending on what you're trying to measure. I hope that's useful. Great. Um so I'd like to encourage if anyone else has questions to send them in. But Charlotte, I mean, we're about to come up this week on Rahu Ketu, changing signs. This is like the major event every 18 months. So I thought, I was wondering if you could share your perspective on what we should be looking forward to. Yes, good, good question. Yes, thank you. Um, well, so this would be, uh, you know, again, uh, referring back to how this would be useful in a um, how that, that question would be useful, excuse me, in a um, a consulting session. Um, I, again, Bill, I'm gonna uh, run dust, Bill. I'm gonna elaborate on this a little bit so that uh, this could actually tie into what I hope will be useful for for um, for consulting Jyotishis. So typically, when a, a when a client client comes to me, as opposed to many um, of the you know Indian 
based clients who have a they have a specific question about something uh it, and usually it's you know family related or business related or you know it's certainly a legitimate pressing question but uh, it, it's very in, in my practice it's rare for people to have a uh a, a a pressing question typically what happens is that people want to uh get my well i've had a lot of this lately who am i that's an interesting question and and Jyotish is a brilliant uh, symbol system for offering, uh, offer for identifying that. Or at least, I tell people I give them my opinion about what I'm seeing in their chart about who they are, as opposed to what, whatever. So, uh, I'll, I I I go through my checklist. I have uh, I showed you this before. My the the world's most elementary hand drawn where the planets are in any given sign for 2020 or for 2021. I would go through this litany. Oh, Jupiter is in its own sign in your third house. This would be this. I mean, uh, here there, there are opportunities here in this arena for for whatever it is. <clears throat> There's opportunities for evolution and fortune and gain if you take a calculated risk. All those words are obviously associated with Jupiter. The re reverse would be true. Um, here, Saturn is is transiting through your, uh, you know, house number X. Uh, this is the time to really eliminate dead wood. Really focus. Do what you know you're supposed to do. Don't do what you know you're not supposed to do. Just focus on this. Then I would say, oh, and after the third week in September, not confining it to a date, but after the third week in September, Rahu K2 are changing into financial into uh you know what's typically considered to be financial uh signs so again the way i do my transit analysis is that i make the main references to whatever house this is moving into um whatever house this is moving into uh of course it has the generic the, the generic influence between the third week in September of 2020 and the third week in March of 2022, it describes I, the, the terminology I use. This is a background theme. This is this is running in the background for that 18 month period. Just to put it in context, Rahu K2 have not been in these houses in your chart for 18 years. So it is it, it this can be indicated. This can be a game changer. That's the kind of terminology. This can be a game changer. It's rare and it's powerful. Now Rahu K2 themselves are. You know, these are, I describe Rahu Keto as wild cards. Depending on, you know, a myriad of factors, their dispositors and that sort of thing. Um, uh, I would say that just the general concept is that there will be a sudden spike of activity, which may be uncharacteristic for you, motivated by what may be non-conscious motivations in this period especially uh, around, especially when the, when Rahu Ketu are entering any sign or house or leaving any given sign or house. So for my clients, they get, in, in certain ways, everybody gets a, a bit of the same generic advice. Okay, look, this is a big deal. Uh, uh, Rahu is entering, Rahu is entering Taurus. Uh, that's a good position for it. Uh, and what's the what's the impact on you? Well, let's see. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Ramdas, Bill, how 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 far do you want me to go with this question? Uh, it's uh, well, I, I, so, um, so I really love the way you're starting the approach. I think it's funny. I must have picked up from you the wild card term because I've yeah. started using that a lot. I think it really displays like. Anything goes wherever they are. You can't be sure. But then, like, so I would say, like, then I would look. Like, would you then look at like the house and say, so this is in your tenth house, so you could have career advancements, upheaval, yes, you know, things like that. Yes. So yes, and here's the idea that I I like to convey to my clients is that all right, this planet is not here yet. But that is the reason you're paying me your good money is to look around a corner and say to get prepared for this. Uh, or it, if, if not prepared for this, at least monitor your own mind and see what kind of new attitude you have in this case, as you brought up Ram Das Bill, to your, your 10th house. There will be, there could be a, a very interesting disruption. Now, I think that vocabulary is very important. 
well, and you might say eloquently, well, duh. But again, I have uh, I've, I've come up with a complement of words that I use that are that are that are I, I hope that they're palatable. So I say disruption. Now, in a certain way, that's neither. I don't like to really use that word these days because of you know who. But um, but still, I, I think that's that's more that's kind of a neutral term, or slightly neutral if there is such a thing. So I would say that um, monitor your own mind, client, uh, and 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 get ready for something um, uh, where there there could be a, there there would be a disruption. Do you want to have a disruption here? You know, if someone is dissatisfied with their with their career, I would, I would say to that person, uh, there's, this is a powerful, this is a powerful influence. Again, to keep it in context, uh, just so you'll know, this didn't happen, you know, last year or 10 years ago. This happened 18 years ago. If you're old enough, you can go back and see what, uh, see, uh, you know, if you can, if you can relate to something that happened at that point, 18 years ago. And uh, it, typically my client will, very helpfully chime in and say, yes, this is when I started this job 18 years ago or whatever, you know, they, they like to participate with that. People I found are, are really, they love astrology so much. They just, they like to relate to it. Yes, 18 years ago. And then they'll tell me a little story and then I'll cut them off and say, let me finish here. Here's the idea uh, that if you're, <clears throat> if you're, if you're looking for an, an abrupt shift, then uh, get get prepared for that in advance. But the thing also about Rahu Ketu that I emphasize with my clients is is okay in two weeks or one week or whatever it is Rahu Ketu to change sides. Are you doing your regular spiritual practice? Now I'll be honest with you. This is the same question I ask every single client. I don't care where they're coming from. I ask them that question. And and typically they typically they do their own spiritual practice of whatever sort and then we talk about that for a moment to make it so that i can determine whether we're whether whether they're talking about the same thing that i'm getting at but again with rahu and ketu the only way to manage these planets is is from uh you know developing your own super consciousness rahu and ketu are so powerful as disruptors or wild cards or maverick or outliers or anomalies that's one of my first my 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 first good words for an, uh, as anomalies for Rahu Ketu is that they're operating on an illogical and irrational level. Not that that's negative. What I mean by that is they do not operate on a logical level or a rational level. This is what I tell my clients that that you are you, you're being unduly influenced. To un, you're perhaps find that you could be unduly influenced by your own samskaras or by your own uh by your own vestiges of a previous lifetime which which accounts for the irrationality or the illogicality of this really strong unconscious motivation i tell people be careful to not act too much out of character get a you know watch and observe for observe this three week uh the third week of september period while uh while rahu ketu are are getting their footing again, or something along those lines. I use the most simple analogies that I can. These these powerful planets without mass are crossing a threshold and uh, are crossing from one state to another. Another. So observe your own mind. That's one of my constant comments. And um, and do your spiritual practice because that's the only way to address this kind of energy. And um, and then be ready to make a move if that is what you want to do. If you do not want to make a move, then extra due diligence is is required here because it is it is destabilizing. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I, when I hear myself say that, nothing is either good or bad, is it? That's too way too simple. We could just characterize things as being good or bad. Then anybody could do this kind of work. Um, was that too many words? Does that make does that make some sense? Yes, I think that makes good sense. There's a lot of good language in there, I think, because I think the nodes are very difficult to discuss. Yeah. I, I, very nuanced, you know. They are. They are. Um, and of course, they operate better in certain places than another. So, for instance, to use your example, Ram Das, uh, um, 
the north node Rahu moving into the 10th house. Now, that's a public place. I mean, that is not terribly personal. That's, I mean, it, no, I mean, it's in a relative way, that's not so personal. It's, it can be, it's out in the, in the objective world. You can possibly deal with it in a, in a certain way or deal with it more objectively than you may uh, if it were in another position, the first house, for instance, or, or the eighth house. Of course, they all, they all carry their own, uh, their, their own cost benefit there. But, but I would say just again, to, to elaborate on your example of the 10th house, I would say there's gonna be a shakeup in, uh, in at least middle management. Uh, either your, either here's my, here's my litany. Either your your immediate direct report, your boss, if you don't, uh, or or somewhere higher up the food chain. I actually use terms like that. It makes people laugh. It makes me laugh. Higher up the food chain, or your your business, your business, or your company, or your entire field, your entire field of endeavor. Um, so you know, depending on a person's uh, capacity for for risk, you know that's one, another thing that we would have we would we slash I would have determined going into this based on experience or you know based on where their Saturn is. But again, the generic uh, issues associated with Rahu K two are about financial security, aren't they? And people's value systems, right? Because it's in these are the uh, it, it, the generic sign of of, of I mean, the sign of Taurus, I don't mean the generic sign of Taurus. I mean, the sign of Taurus means generically issues about the financial substance. Um, I mean, we, of course, we all know this, uh, but it's a pretty simple concept to, to, uh, to offer to our clients. Uh, the, uh, you know, a simple, let's see, a, a simple uh, little bit of advice would be, you know, monitor your own mind to see what, you, what you're all of a sudden going to spend your hoarded money on. I use that term too because it's funny. You know, the second house is the ho the house of of uh, which is related to Taurus, as you well know, is associated with saved money or hoarded money. These are movable aspect assets, movable assets. What dollars, euros, gold bullion. You know, just watch yourself. Get a get a second opinion until until you get a little more used to this effect. And then obviously the complement of Rahu, that being K two. Uh, is is going through Scorpio, the the sign that I, I characterize as as joint ventures or or jointly had held money. Yes, it has to do with dex, debts, taxes, insurance, a, a money that you owe people as well. So, um, just in this instance, I'm offering uh, my clients the again, it's it's when I say generic advice, I mean it's tailored specifically to K2 in Scorpio. But what I mean, generic. This is this applies to everybody, doesn't it? Um, K2 is in is in Scorpio for everyone, in a different houses, obviously. But but I, uh, you know, I say as a as a metaphysical technique, uh, if you're if you have debt, then uh, it take as much money as you can to at least completely eliminate any given debt, a, a given debt, possibly not your mortgage, but uh, what revolving credit issues or something symbolic like that. You know that K2 is the planet of detachment. What we're aiming for is to detach ourselves from, from debt uh, in the next 18 months. Now, that might sound like, uh, well, I don't know what it sounds like, but it sounds like a good idea to me. But, um, but you know, my clients, they, they come, they already know what I'm gonna, you know, my clients, I'm, I'm characterized as being pretty cut and dried or no nonsense, somebody said, but that's that's no nonsense advice. Yes, it's metaphysical advice, but it's it, I hope it's it's practical that one can always take action to take some at least symbolic step toward something, can't they? Yes, they can. Uh, so, or, or voluntarily, I also, um, I'm suggesting to people to voluntarily give some money away, especially to uh, organizations that feed that feed the, the feed the poor or the hungry. I mean that that is well known to be the the, the highest uh, upaya or or well one of the highest upayas. Uh, one of the highest uh, intentional remedial actions is to feed the hungry, and you well know that uh, the second house uh, being 
uh, uh, being associated with, with finance is also associated with food. Well, food and clothing and speech, uh, and among other things, and knowledge of the ancient Shastras as well, and being knowledgeable in general. And that's, uh, I, I, I'm listening to myself recently, I, I also find myself uh, reminding people, well, especially right now when Jupiter is in Sagittarius, to, you know, bone up on the gaps in your in your knowledge or your understanding. This does not mean necessarily uh, read about a new technique on how to do something, but but uh, gaps in your knowledge. How do how do things work? Define your own belief system, sort of thing. Um, but the second house, as you may know, is the uh, house of uh, knowledge of the ancient shastras. So studying Jyotish is a good activity uh, under this kind of situation. And again, I'm referring to to uh, to Rahu K2 moving into Taurus Scorpio. Is that, uh, I'm hoping that's helpful to you. Great, that's good information. So we just got a question in from Loretta and she's asking what sidereal ephemeris um, for 2021 do you use for New York, New Jersey area to determine spiritual dates as well as planetary transits? Well, um, okay, so there is the BETS, B-E-T-Z, ephemeris, which will show you, you know what an ephemeris is, will show you the positions of the planets. I happen to have this uh, calendar from uh, AstroVed um, for 2020. I do most ardently hope that I get one for 2021 very soon. Um, I mean, for you know, I'm an old lady. I got a paper calendar here. I'm delighted with having a paper calendar. Although you you uh, you also know that there are plenty of panchongs, uh, panchongas on the on the internet. You know we live in such a wonderful world. You know, you just search put put that in your search bar and you'll be inundated with information in terms of of uh, f you know festivals and all that sort of thing. And additionally, our our most beloved Comilla, uh, uh, she. She has that information on her website as well. For I mean, if you are talking about the the traditional uh, Hindu festivals associated with associated with uh, astronomical slash astrological uh, positions, so that's I'm not dodging the question. I hope that's that's useful. The bets ephemeris for actual placements, some kind of a, I mean, again, Astrovade. They have plenty. Of, they have lots and lots of information. Uh, or the internet in general. You, you can't go wrong there. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, I think that's good. I would also add that uh, you can go to mypanchang.com and I use that sometimes because you can put in your zip code so it'll help. And another good resource, especially in New York and New Jersey, is most of the local Hindu temples will put out a calendar every year. And for a small donation, it will give you when they are celebrating all of the rituals. So they'll give you when they're doing Puja the Hanuman and everything. So not only will you have it to give to clients, but you yourself, it gives you a good opportunity to attend and connect to some of those things. So just some other thoughts. Yeah, perfect, good, yes. Yes, that, I mean, it, it's, it's really readily available. Um, I say that with all due, res all due respect. So um, Deepak has just sent in a question and he's asking, how do you determine the past as a learning? I think he means what from the past as a learning? As a, a, a lesson from the past? Is, is that the essence of the question? Quite sure. Deepak, let me go ahead and unmute you if you're ready, and then I, you can ask Charlotte the question directly. I want to make sure we understand it. Please. So, Deepak, you can unmute yourself up in the right-hand corner. And I, okay, Deepak, it looks like you're good to go with your question. Hey Charlotte, <clears throat> my question is, you know, how do you determine the past and what can you learn from it? 
and how do you take those learnings into this life? Well, God bless your darling heart. That is a good question. Uh, I don't know. How do you take the, the, what do you mean by the past? Do you mean, do you mean two months ago or do you mean a previous lifetime? Uh, uh, previous lifetime. Well, okay. So you probably well know that the fifth house is the house of Purva Punya. I mean, looking at past, past life credit, at least, um, you know, you would, uh, you know, your whole chart is your, is your karma, isn't it? I, I hate to sound like an amateur here, but, um, but I mean, every planet in your, every planet in your chart says that this is something you, this is, a you know, leftover unfinished business, business from a previous lifetime. You need to, you need to work this, you need to work this out. You have a, you know, a debilitated planet of whatever sort that says, you know, put more attention on that. A debilitated planet without Nichibanga. But, uh, you, you know, look at your, uh, just look at, at, at your most difficult planet to see what you still need to polish up in this lifetime. And then the opposite would be true. And if you look at your, your fifth house of pre past life credit, uh, you could say uh, the, 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 um, the contemporary language I use with my clients to, if, I mean, thank God my clients don't usually ask me a question like that. I say that with all due respect, but uh, if I would say to a person, oh, good, look at these great, these, the, the associations with your fifth house, planets in your fifth house, your fifth house lowered aspects to your fifth house. This says you have past life credit based on, on these gifts, make the most of them. I, I, I would say to, I said, and in fact, I used this term uh, with a client yesterday. I said, noblesse oblige. Uh, that means to whom much is given, much is expected. So you know, don't just deplete your positive karma from the past by by not uh, by you know by not offering that for for the good of all. Um, I'm not. You know that your your question, Deepak, could that, that that's a that's a two hour or a two week question. Um, I don't. I'd probably not come within a million miles of actually addressing it. Uh, properly, but again, if if it's and again, I'm a I'm a pretty cut and dried person. What are you actually asking? What in your own chart l describes lessons that you either continue need to continue to work on? That would be difficult planets, weak planets, uh, or what what lesson that you received uh, from from positive experiences or from your own skill set or uh that you can that you could also use to elaborate your life and and uh make it better for yourself and people around you um that's the best i can do with that question sir unless i were to unless i were to understand it better no i think that's that's fair i mean i think <clears throat> this question is really when people start to think about you know what is the meaning of life and you know why i'm here <clears throat> so the question then becomes it if you're here you can look at your chart you look at all the planets you can look at all the <clears throat> points and weakness and the strengths but then you know so what you know if if the end goal is nirvana and and a balance then you know what is my learning what should i be doing better right what i'm not doing and then, you know, what direction should I focus on? Because, you know, there are several different directions uh, based on the planetary strengths. Um, if I am here, there is a reason for me I'm here. There is unresolved issues, right? So what are those unresolved issues? So getting an understanding of that could help, you know, focus some of that energy and balance it. Yes, well, that comes from the birth chart, doesn't it? Or whatever specific, or, or the or the the D10 or the D9, depending on how old a person is. I mean, there's so many different measurement factors here. But I'll be honest with you: when a client uh, asked me that question, it's rare that they would ask me that question. But I would say, you know, the reason anybody's incarnated in, on this planet is to love God and serve humans. I mean, love God and serve humans. Again, I I warned you. I was I'm pretty simple-minded, but. I mean, if you can find a better all-purpose uh, uh, response, then then use that. But but uh, you know how to you know love God. Will you do that in your own way? And uh, s serving humans—that's 
however however one serves humans but i would say that uh, you know in a looking at this from an uh, from an outer expression uh you would look at 10th house or d10 issues uh, about how to again i'm a practical person you know what, what's your skill set what do you do and what are your good works for society the 10th house what are your good works for society i mean that's of course assuming that you're taking care of your family yourself first your family and then then society why are we here to love god and to serve humans well i i was looking at it differently i was looking at you know you have all these houses the houses that are weak are the areas where you have to do still some work and the houses that are strong are your leverage so you know how do you balance all that so that when you're balanced then you have that ultimate nirvana if you focus too much on public or helping which is which is great but then you have to also look at yourself internally as a microcosm right who are you inside and what what aspiration you have i think i i'm listening to maybe deepak chopra a lot where you know he talks about that that you are part of this universe and it's so much as external as it is internal right so internally how do how are you growing well the the external reflects the internal doesn't it uh so of course any kind of any sort of conscious choice you're you're intending to make on your outside world would would be predicated on what you're doing on your your inside world um again this is it's a, i mean that's a philosophical concept i think that's pretty straightforward but if you're as and and then there's the other factor of the the unfolding of these abilities over time so based on i mean you you referenced um the, you know weak weak houses or strong houses and how to keep that in balance i think that's what you you made some reference to that so i would say that uh, you know at any point i mean just being very generic at any at any uh any house that that saturn is going through says that you you know you need to polish yourself there or or become more mature there or you know smarten up a bit that's my language possibly not your language but it's the basic idea so there there's a factor too of the you know the the time de dependent factor if we could all just smarten up uh immediately simultaneously that'd be great uh but so i mean i'm intending to be hopeful uh, helpful uh but i mean i think you already actually know the answer to that question sir i don't necessarily know the answer that's why i was asking i think i think you know it's it's a learning for everyone and i i thought you know if you had some more guidance from the horoscope that would have been great but um, i think it's a quest let me put it this way <laughs> well without looking at your birth chart sir i i mean i i have to speak in generalities uh in this particular case but you i mean you've already defined you know weak houses put more attention on that but also not everybody not every house is going to be strong i mean you could you could either uh, you could either strengthen your weak points yeah that's a good idea or or play on your own strengths uh but it depends uh, i mean again i hope i offered a a a a helpful idea that it really depends on on the uh in the the, the dasha sequence that you're running and the transits to any given house as well um it is you know it's constant evolution for everybody isn't it it is to be hoped is constant evolution for everybody <laughs> it definitely but it, is but then the question is you know if everything is a pattern in life a pattern at different times you know is there a point in time when the life pattern repeats itself because astrology and astronomy are basically you know points in the skies and then at some point you know they repeat and when yeah. they repeat does the life repeat itself no it doesn't it repeats a variation on a similar theme but it is to be hoped that you don't get bit by the same dog twice if you're talking about saturn for instance and my understanding of how this works is that evolution is an upward spiral so it's not a straight line upward you you do repeat the variation on a similar theme uh in order of, uh, in in terms of a of a of a challenging aspect for instance 
of course, we know that most most evolution comes through, or because of or coincident with uh, with difficult transits, don't, don't they? Doesn't it? So, uh, I mean, just using Saturn as a simple example is that uh, you know, 30 years ago, Saturn transited your first house. What did you do with that? What did you do about that? What did you do to yourself, with yourself, for yourself? Uh, of course, 30 years later, then possibly if Saturn's transiting your first house, just to use a simple example, this would say that you're, you know, this may more relate more to health-related issues. Uh, so, and and period, new idea. The other thing is that, you know, secretly we are in charge of everything that goes on with us. The planets are not our puppet masters. Now, I love to say this to my clients because the the, the, the constant question for my clients is, what's going to happen? Now, clients that return to me know better than to say, what is going to happen to me? What they really mean to say is to change that preposition. What is going to happen with me? Because otherwise, they're going to get an earful from me about how the world works, ironically. But I do, I, I mentioned the fact that, you know, our, our, our charts, our birth charts, are simply our default settings. Now, some things, again, yes, there's there's a lot of aspects about our birth charts that are, are fated or destined uh, until we get to a certain point. But these are our default settings, and default settings, as we know, can be changed through application, choices, experience, intelligence. It is to be hoped that we, that we act on a more conscious level to not be at the mercy of our own default settings for good or for ill. So, I mean, I just inserted that as a corollary to your question about about you know how the how the planets work. I mean, look, we're in 2020. I think that that the uh, with all due respect uh, to everything, always, but with all due respect, you know, we have more options now to to react in a different way to whatever influence we have, whether it's a birth influence or or uh, whether it's a temporary transit dasha situation. We always have the option to respond in a different way, don't we? Uh, I agree with you. I think there's another aspect to that. Uh, the aspect is, you know, where you're born, uh, country, uh, what culture, and yes. and all those aspects and the friendship, which are conscious or subconscious choices that you make that affects the decisions you make and who you are. So sure. there is there's a flow of energy that you know, sometimes we don't realize that we are part of. And maybe that also defines, you know, what is the meaning of life uh, without realizing it? Well, that's, um, you know, that is the question, isn't it? Uh, again, I've reduced it to those two phrases. That That is, you know, just uh, as a working concept, that's what, uh, that's what seems to me to be true. The meaning of life is to love God and serve humans. Well, humans, the planet, animals, everything. Uh, so that's my take on that. So I, I, I hope that that's something to think about or something useful. Or uh, thank, I mean, thank you for your thoughts. Uh, I think this is uh, this is a good discussion. I, I agree with you that this discussion can go on forever. But uh, this yes. is a good start. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. So um, does anyone else have anything, any other questions for Charlotte? Um, we're uh, coming near the end of our time, but I uh, just wanted to put it out there one more time I, and take this time also to thank Charlotte for meeting with all of us and sharing your insights and information. And I mean, I just want to say it's so helpful to hear the very simple plain language, because I think that's a powerful way to convey this knowledge. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ram Dasbel, for that endorsement. And, and that is one of my major messages to, to those of us that are intending to cultivate a professional uh, consulting practice. Uh, and as you are, anybody that has heard me before has heard me uh, raving about the, the, uh, the, the opportunities we have. Uh, I mean, in, the, in this culture, which culture am I talking about? The West, the East, it doesn't matter where it is to, um, to serve, to use our, to use our understanding of, of how the planets work or how they can work to, to serve people, especially in these uncertain times. 
and um, I'm, I'm, I'm a, again a great advocate of, of uh, the the possibility of of um, Jyotish, Jyotish consulting as a career. I think it's very valuable for us to develop. Uh, it's very valuable to to society to, for us to de for us to develop our own our own individual spiritual abilities, our abilities to communicate, uh, our vocabulary, our behavior, our mannerisms to uh, to be um, you know to to be the membrane between between the abstract knowledge of the influence of the stars and planets, and the and and serving as a conduit for the benefit of, you know, of, of individuals. I think one individual at a time, we are we could do a tremendous amount of good, for um, reassuring uh, or cautioning. Um, that's my that's one of my wor words, caution. Uh, but I, you know, you've heard this from me before. But I but it, it bears repeating. It bears repeating. Keep it you know keep it simple. Keep it understandable. Keep real clear boundaries on on the the length of your sessions if you don't mind me you know don't mind me offering that again translate everything that you that you see uh i mean again i'm obviously a westerner and uh my clients do not want to hear about um you know about what about mahapurusha yogas they want to know oh this is a specifically good combination for you here's your you have a special yoga it's spelled b-h-a-d-r-a -A. you can go online and for further elaboration search for b-h-a-d-r-a -A yoga you have that in your chart make the most of this uh sort of thing i mean that's how i talk to my clients uh just keeping it as simple as possible i remember when i started uh, studying jyotish back in the day there was a real emphasis on using the Sanskrit terms. And without sounding more like a her heretic than I already am, um, I, I have Rahu in the ninth house. I'm proud to be a natural born heretic. I tried to do that for a while. And of course, the, the Sanskrit language, the terminology there is priceless. It's beautiful. It conveys ideas that cannot be conveyed in any other linguistic system, but not with your clients, not with your clients. You can. Uh, I mean, that's my emphasis, unless you're talking to a, I don't know, unless you're talking to a, a Sanskrit scholar or someone that, that already knows the meaning of this. Um, you know, less is more, less is more. Accuracy and accuracy and accessibility, I think are the two, two prime concerns. We want to be able to, to give, you know, the one of the essential, one of the, possibly the most essential, uh, excuse me, definition of an authentic Jyotishi is the, is the ability to make accurate predictions. Now that could open up a whole other can of worms, predictions. I mean, people are going, don't predict. What? That's insane. That's what people are paying us for. Maybe not predict, but at least to, to uh, point in a, in a direction. Look, Jupiter is in its own sign in your, what, fill in the blank, house, in your seventh house. Keep your eyes open if you if you if you want to if you want to develop a relationship to be proactive in that area. That would be something I'd legitimately say to people. I would also, uh, um, you know, begin that discussion just to use this example: Jupiter in its own sign between now and the and, and Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is, as you probably know, an American holiday or toward the end of November. Be proactive about anything. Just use very simple concepts. My clients sometimes have the, um, you know, they have the, they have the consciousness to repeat back to me what I have said during the session, and, and that takes about mm, what 90 seconds, 60 seconds. It takes a very short period of time. In 90 minutes, I'm talking to, I'm, I'm elaborating on certain concepts in detail for a client that they can, that they can uh, feed back to me in 90 seconds about what I said. And that's what they're going to leave with that 90 second soundbite. Okay, relationships, good. Uh, finances, keep a grip on that. Uh, health related issues, uh, check your liver enzymes. Uh, uh, start documenting things at, at your at your job if 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 it looks like things are strange with your with your boss or whatever. Or or your your mother might need more of your attention. I, you know, I, I, I intentionally use euphemisms, like for instance, 
your elderly mother who is in advanced stages of whatever it is will need more of your attention in this period. That would be a good investment of your time. Not saying that something's ha going to happen to your mother, but uh, I mean the the uh, I, I mean I, I think this is a practical matter of of uh, advising a certain behavior. I think that could be that sort of thing could be useful. So I mean that's what people are asking about. Um, next time we meet, I'll have a stack of charts and I'll look at the questions that I have been asked this week. Uh, there you know there should be something for professional Joe Tishis. Uh, what kind of, what question did you get this, l listen to this one, uh, just as a, sort of as a practicum. Um, Charlotte? Yes. Charlotte, so um, Loretta asks, does the change of axis, of the Rahu K2 axis stir up our external and internal weaknesses to force growth? Sure, yes, in a specific arena. That's why that's why God invented houses. Yes, in a specific arena. Um, yes, the answer that that is my opinion about that. To stir things up, sure, because you know the the the, the concept of Rahu Ketu is that there are, well, especially for Rahu, there are there are unconscious cravings for something. I mean, and the the concept is the lack of consciousness is the is the issue, I almost said problem, uh, issue. Um, so being, uh, again, the application of due diligence in any fragile area, see that's a word I use, fragile. The areas where Rahu and Ketu are going through your chart are fragile. They are subject to, uh, is subject to you or the client acting up in some unconscious way. And then there's the interchange of the exterior the, the exterior conditions could provoke acting up in a certain way. That would be a term that I would use. Um, but yes, it's it's always a matter of of refining our response to life, isn't it? And making better choices. And I like the I like the concept of of reminding our clients, even though it might seem ironic. We're going to you know we're going to the fortune teller to find out what's going to happen. Um, that uh that you know the choices again this was brought up at the beginning of our session about the the waiver about assigning responsibility to the client for the choices that they make but this uh the value of talking to a jyotishi about any given planetary combination is to say this would be the point where you need to be due diligent in order to realize that there is a choice that you need to make otherwise it may be made for you um, and that's I know that's a simple concept, but I think that in the you know this modern context that that I mean at least that works those concepts work with my clients that that yes, we definitely have more choice than we may recognize. And it's about choices more than our own it's about choices, period. Gosh, I hope that was not too much elaboration. Um, but that's how I work with my clients. My intention is to be here and 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 uh, just sort of offer the the sort of phraseology that I use with my clients. No, I think that's very helpful. I appreciate that. You're so, so I think that's all the questions we have for today. Um, again, so I um, oh great, good. So we get, we're starting to get thank yous uh, for the session. Please, I'm going to ask everyone, tell your friends, tell your Joe Tishy friends to that they can um, uh, sign up for this, this ongoing session. We just have re-updated the ACFA Facebook page. So American College of Vedic Astrology on Facebook, and there's a link there that you can um, go to. They can go to to sign up for this series and the other series that are going on in ACFA. Well, yes, thank you, Ram Das, for reminding us about the business end of this. Um, you, know, <laughs> you know, these these uh, these 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 webinars, these sessions are are offered as a as a, a labor of love or a gift of love to you. Uh, so uh, I, I hope that you that you derive some value from it, and uh, and I'm here on a personal level too not necessarily to address philosophical questions but you know the the 
the more uh, mundane nuts and bolts bits about um, about especially about languaging with clients. Um, I, I think that that is where uh, I, I mean I think that's where the rubber meets the road, as they say in the Wild West, where you know the intelligibility of the of the uh, you know the, the translation. We're we're all translators, or we're giving an opinion about a translation for our on our client's behalf. Uh, so, as I just to reemphasize, I'm uh, I'm available to you and for you, and uh, and the, you know the the American College of Vedic Astrology is also the most brilliant uh, organization of of Jyotish knowledge uh, available to you. Of course, it's online, uh, which is a good thing. Uh, so do um, you know continue continue your education with us and again the professional certification that that you would get with us I mean that that is is a really worth the tuition I know that from my uh, my own practice I have all these initials after my name and that is one thing on the rare uh, uh, you know on the the rare occasion that somebody comes for me off the off the internet or just randomly they they're they're interested in in speaking with uh, a, with a, an astrologer with with academic credentials, so again, that's my plug for the college. But um, so in the meantime, I send you off with my very best wishes. Everybody, stay stay safe, and uh, I'll do the same. And um, be good to each other. And we'll see you back here another time. Thank you for being with us. <laughs>